Safely buying crypto is really easy, but when you first get started and look into it, it might seem really complicated with lots of different steps involved. You have to find a safe place to buy and store your crypto and actually figure out what investment will make you money and not just be a complete scam. You might have heard of people becoming overnight millionaires from investing into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and even obscure cryptos like Dogecoin and Shiba Inu. Recently, Bitcoin has been hitting record prices with a value of $75,000. During this video, I'll explain exactly why you should start investing into cryptocurrency at this point in time, the safest place to buy and store your crypto, and of course, an exact step-by-step -step process of how to make your first investment into the cryptocurrency market. So firstly, where do you actually buy your crypto from? You buy them from the exchange, and you might have heard of ones such as Coinbase and Binance, which are two large American companies in Australia and New Zealand. Easy Crypto is quite a helpful platform, and it's the one that I personally do all my investing with and it's gonna be the bulk of this video as well. So an exchange is where you can buy your cryptocurrency and then following on from this, you need somewhere to store it as well. So you can technically store your crypto on the exchange you buy it from, but this is really not a safe strategy. Exchanges have been hacked in the past, like crypto.com. Sometimes an exchange can go bankrupt as well. You may have heard of FTX and Celsius. Recently, Celsius was able to redistribute some of the lost money to its investors. I was one of them. I had over four and a half thousand New Zealand dollars locked up on Celsius, but thankfully I was able to get all of that back. But you never know if this is gonna happen. So I would never ever recommend leaving your money on the exchange you buy it from, no matter how big and reputable and financial successful it might seem on paper. Exchanges are all fairly similar in terms of how you navigate them. There can be some variation with the fees. For example, on Coinbase, if you invest $1,000, you're going to be charged about 33 to 35 New Zealand dollars in fees versus with Easy Crypto, you're going to be charged about 30 to $33. So they are quite similar in terms of their pricing. Some exchanges allow you to stake your crypto, meaning you can lock it up for a certain period of time where you can't buy or sell it, and then you gain interest on it. Staking a rewards can vary greatly depending on what crypto is being staked. You can get anywhere from a 3 to 15% return. But it's always best practice to take your crypto from the exchange and store it on a wallet. Easy Crypto is also doing a promotion that will give three viewers $100 in Bitcoin for leaving the best comment on this video. So leave a comment down below. I'll be picking up the winner about a week after uploading the video. To qualify for this, of course, you'll need to leave a comment. You also need to have an account with Easy Crypto because I'll be asking the winners for their Bitcoin addresses so that Easy Crypto can send them their $100 in Bitcoin. So leave a comment down below and I'll be picking out the winners shortly. Thanks to Easy Crypto for kindly providing this promotion. In terms of wallets, there's two main types. You can get a software wallet, which is a downloadable program. It's typically free and you can use it from either your phone or your computer. One of the main software wallets that I personally like to use is Exodus. It's compatible with both iOS and and Android and it's very straightforward easy to use it has some extra features like letting you exchange your crypto so if you want to exchange a thousand dollars of Bitcoin into Ethereum you can do that on the platform you can also stake certain cryptocurrencies and it's compatible with some hardware wallets like the Trezor Model T. When it comes to a hardware or software wallet security is key. With a software wallet it is technically not as sound and secure as a hardware wallet because technically it has some form of connection to the internet even with Exodus if you download a keylogger and someone can gain access to your password they can gain access to your wallet again with either a software or hardware wallet when you set one up it's gonna give you something called a seed phrase and this is a string of 12 words that is put in a very specific order and it's used to unlock your wallet if you ever happen to forget your password for example if you have exodus you might have ten thousand dollars worth of bitcoin on there if you have it downloaded on your laptop and your laptop breaks you can download exodus on another computer Computer and then use your seed phrase to gain access to your Exodus wallet from another device. But again, if someone else gains access to your seed phrase, they gain access to your wallet. So the storage is only as secure as how well you can keep your seed phrase nice and safe. It's always recommended to write it down on paper. Don't take a digital screenshot of it or have it stored digitally anywhere. You want to keep it offline off the internet to maximize its security. In comparison to a hardware wallet, a hardware wallet is a physical device it can look a little bit like a usb drive the two link companies that make them are ledger and trezor the one that i personally go with again is a trezor model t they do range in terms
terms of how expensive they are some are only say eighty dollars and others can be four to five hundred dollars plus so the main difference with the pricing is the number of coins that the wallet supports and the type of interface that it has for Trezor Model T the one that I have it has a touchscreen interface but something like a Ledger Nano S is navigated by the use of buttons so it can be a little bit more challenging to use if there's not a touchscreen on it if you're investing into some of the main cryptos like Bitcoin and Ethereum any wallet will help support these so there's not really going to be a massive difference in terms of buying a more expensive or less expensive wallet I always recommend if you're first starting out and investing say under five thousand dollars then start with a software wallet and then if you build up to a portfolio of over five thousand dollars then invest in a hardware wallet but if you're thinking already that you have to spend a few hundred dollars just to even buy say fifty dollars worth of crypto you might never get started with it so starting with a free option through a software wallet is a great place to begin so moving on what should you be investing in there's a whole variety of different crypto categories and a great website to keep track of everything is called coin gecko it'll give you a quick breakdown of the whole market just quickly type it into google it's the first link that comes up and you can see what the whole crypto market is doing so with crypto you have the main names like bitcoin ethereum solana ada and then there's the subcategories such as the meme coins and you probably would have heard of some of these like dogecoin shiba inu and pepe the meme coins don't have any real intrinsic value but again if there's a lot of hype and interest around an investment and people are buying it the price is going to go up and you're going to make money when this happens is pretty Pretty variable but when it does happen you can see a massive return dogecoin has gone up over 1500 percent so when it comes to actually knowing what crypto to invest in it's hard to really say directly off the bat unless you do a lot of in-depth research on the cryptocurrency when you buy things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're the main players in the crypto space. Think of them like the Apple and Amazon of the cryptocurrency world. They're very stable, they have a good overall nice consistent return and Bitcoin is essentially the anchor for the cryptocurrency market. All other coins which aren't Bitcoin are classified as altcoins and they will follow Bitcoin with a 1.5 to 2.5 X multiple in terms of their price movements, both for going up and down. So when the market's doing really well and everything's profitable, altcoins will typically make more money than Bitcoin, but if the market's falling and losing a lot of its value, then Bitcoin will be a more stable investment. So in terms of the timing, when should you be investing in crypto? There is some predictability with this. There's something called the Bitcoin halving, where the reward for mining Bitcoin gets cut in half. And this happens every four years. So in a straightforward way to think about this is the supply of Bitcoin is reduced, its demand is still high, therefore the price goes up. And historically, this has yielded a huge return. The last halving cycle happened in May of 2020. So from May 2020 up until March 2021, Bitcoin went up about 540%, but 10 months after that, it lost over 70% of its value. And again, the halving cycle before that in July 2016 up until December 2017, Bitcoin went up over 2,800%, but then after that peak value, Value, it lost over 80% of its value as well. So with the halving cycles, they can be a really great time to invest, but the profitability and how long that run lasts is about 10 to 14 months. And then after that, you'll see a very sharp drop of up to 80%. But again, all your investments need to come from your own research and your own due diligence. And don't just take some random person's advice on the internet on what you should be doing with your money. Buying crypto can be really exciting, but there's a lot of risk versus reward. If you compare the five-year return of the stock market, looking at something like the S&P 500 index, over the past five years, it's gone up 84% in comparison to Bitcoin, which has gone up over 1400%. But over that time, Bitcoin lost over 80% of its value versus the stock market lost a max of about 35% during the COVID pandemic. And the reason the crypto market is so volatile and different to the stock market is because of its total size. So the total market cap for all the cryptocurrency is 2.7 trillion versus the total stock market value just for America is 50 trillion. So it's over 20 times larger than the cryptocurrency market. So it doesn't take as much money to drive the price up and down of cryptocurrencies versus companies listed on the stock market. There are of course other reasons that influence the price of crypto but that's one of the main reasons why the price can go up and down so rapidly. So lastly we'll be taking a look at how to actually buy some cryptocurrency. So firstly I'm going to be using the exchange Easy Crypto and this is completely free. If you type in Easy Crypto into Google it's the first link that comes up 
If you want to make an account, all you need to do is provide your general pieces of info, name, address, phone number, and then you'll have to send through some ID, either driver's license or passport, and then your account will be verified and you can start investing. It's just as easy as making a Facebook or an Instagram profile. So once Easy Crypto is downloaded and ready to go, you just want to click on Instant Buy and sell or it auto populates on the home page here so this is where you're going to enter the amount of crypto that you want to buy so if we want to buy a hundred dollars worth of bitcoin we just enter that here click a hundred dollars and then go buy now then from here it's going to ask for a delivery address and we get the delivery address from our wallet so for this example i'm going to be using exodus this is where you'll retrieve your wallet address from so we're going to be buying bitcoin so we just want to scroll down and find bitcoin or you can manually search for it as well so we'll click on bitcoin and then because you are sending the cryptocurrency from easy crypto over to exodus or whatever wallet you're using you want to click on receive so it's going to give you a string of letters and numbers and you just want to copy and paste that click on copy there then just jump back over to your easy crypto profile copy and paste it in here and then go to next step and after you copy and paste it just make sure the first letters and numbers at the beginning and the end are exactly the same so for me i've got arn at the end and then bc1 at the start so i just have to make sure on exodus that is the same as well so then you go next step and then it's going to give you a few different payment options so you can either pay by logging into your internet banking you can pay with a debit or credit card or you can do a bank deposit as well and then there's also a few other options like online fpos or poly payment so the one that i always go with is account to account i find this is the most straightforward and it has very minimal fees as well you can pay with a debit or credit card but the fees will add up pretty fast because you'll be charged a 3% transaction fee and then bank deposit is great but it's a bit more annoying to do because you have to manually bank transfer easy crypto they'll give you a specific reference number and account number to transfer to and it only gets processed during the weekdays normally and the times that i've done it so i just do account to account so after you select your payment option the crypto will be sent from easy crypto over to your wallet in this case it's going to be exodus in terms of how long it takes for the crypto to show up in your wallet normally one to two days is the normal time frame so it's not going to be instant, but it will take a little bit of time for those coins to show up in your specific wallet. So it's very important to understand all the extra features that comes with an exchange. So for Easy Crypto, you can exchange your cryptocurrency. It's got its own unique app, and you can even keep track of your investment taxes and set up auto investments if you want a dollar cost average into the cryptocurrency market. If you want to see your complete breakdown about Easy Crypto and all of the extra features that it offers, then make sure to check out this video on screen.